tough times don't last, tough people do I know they doubting you, trying to belittle you When you stuck in the trenches, that's just the obstacles You wrote your plan down now, it's time to follow through Tough times don't last, tough people do When you down and out, they try to shit on you When you rise above, it's unbelievable Look, growth and development is achievable What's good, y'all? It's your boy Golden the Slogan And this is Duck No Wreck World Media And today... We talking about why the streets became a scam and how the streets tricked young black, brown, white teens out of their position, their innocence, and all that good stuff, and out of their life and their freedom. But I know what y'all thinking when y'all seeing this, like, yo, how he could tell us about the streets being a scam? Well, contrary to popular belief, I definitely qualify for that. So before we get in this, uh, why the streets is a scam and all that, let me tell you what type of environment and what type of uh, city I grew up in, you are. I come from a dark place. This dark place is not Gotham city this dark place is not co-op city in the bronx this dark place is not any sundown town in texas this dark place i speak of is a dark place called rochester new york you heard we're the city of the non-believers uh the dream killers you know the meek mills in philadelphia they got the dream chasers and all that well in the city of rochester new york we are the non-believers and dream killers like um i think it's a uh nba player named thomas bryant he from rochester right and he just won a nba championship and everybody is showing their gratitude and their admiration and all respects to him and congratulating him but even so it is motherfuckers behind the scenes in rochester saying man nigga he ain't even he ain't even scoring no points like they just hating bro they mad that he he made it you know what i'm saying that's just how it is bro but congratulations to thomas bryant even though you got me banned out of the ymca you lied and said i stole your uh phone you thought i forgot i would never forget nothing like that you called your mother and had your mom come up there and press me and all that and they got me banned out of there i'm not gonna hold you but um <laughs> but congratulations my guy um so uh let's get back into it so i come from rochester right i grew up from a, a single parent household um but i didn't grow up in a bad family my family was extremely good compared to other families um to the point where i thought other families was like that i didn't know about like crackheads and all that when i was growing up so as a kid i was extremely big bigger than the most so my mom wanted to ensure herself that i stayed out of trouble so she had me going doing mad activities like karate swimming basketball a whole lot of video games and i went to this day camp called Bay Street Day Camp. Baden Street Day Camp, I went there from seven years old to like 13, I believe. Baden Street is at number nine school on Clinton Ave, the east side of Rochester, you heard. Across from number nine school is a complex called the Fight Village. Fight Village is the Ville. The Ville is a historical block. The Ville is like the Woo. The Woo is not pop smoking them. Niggas been saying the Woo, screaming Woo in Rochester, you heard. But they're like historical because they got a lot of generations in their neighborhood. It's a lot of historical people from their neighborhood, like fat. Fat, fat, S dot. Um, a lot of people that play basketball, like good at sports, is from that neighborhood. And they have this annual 4th of July block party every year. If you are somebody or know somebody of somebody, you was there. And I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Everybody be in the Ville on the 4th of July. Even the motherfuckers that don't like the Ville be there, you are. Like, it's one of those things. The kids from the Ville was extremely different from, from my mentality. I was more so of a spoiled, sheltered brat. It's like I was the only child with siblings. You know, I wasn't aggressive. I live life by the rules, so to say. Like, if whatever my mom said, I listened to 110%. I'm not gonna lie to you. I wasn't no badass kid like the rest of these motherfuckers. The kids from the Ville, they were some badass kids, you are. If you was from that camp, if you went to Baden Street Day Camp and you didn't live in the Ville, they would terrorize your black ass. No exaggeration. You are. They used to, like, really terrorize motherfuckers, like, bully them. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. Like, kids had it bad there, but I was an exception of the rules because I met this kid named Quan. Quan grew to be called Quan Adon. Quan was one of the ones, you are. Shout out to Quan. I think he locked up right now, free Quan Adon. We developed a relationship off of wrestling. I was like a wrestling fan. He was a wrestling fan. We used to play fight in the morning and all that. So I think he was Stone Cold Steve Austin and I was The Rock, of course, you heard. Like, do you smell what The Rock is cooking? Yeah, I was on all that, you heard. Um, hold on, hold on. Listen, it's very hard for me to talk about these things because like, 
with the production I got going on, it makes me feel like I'm in an interrogation room and we ain't really supposed to be doing that. So you gotta bear with me with this. All right, this is my first video, all right? This is gonna be the worst one, but it's gonna be good. So please bear with me. But let's get back into it. So so me developing a relationship with Quan, I started playing basketball in the morning with the kids. Like there was a kid named Craig. He was like the hottest young basketball player from the Ville. Like I don't know what they was feeding this guy, but this nigga used to ball. Like, like Mike was out at the time. I used to think he was doing when the like mic moves you are like <laughs> word of my mom shout out to craig i think he actually is from the ville i started meeting other people that was like that lived in the ville so i was excluded from the bullying you know older kids was trying to bully me but nigga they old ki older kids bully all young kids that shit didn't really matter i was more so concerned about my parents trying to like team up on me like you know what i'm saying i was i was a kid i wasn't in the streets i my mom told me i was bigger than other kids so i gotta keep my hands off of other people's children she told me to never put my hands on the kid you know like they parents wasn't telling them that i don't know what they was telling them though. like this shit was crazy if you ever watch eyes on hbo that's how it was you know they used to terrorize kids and then like the kids that didn't live in the ville that went to the camp as soon as the kids from the ville leave go back to like when we leave like separate from them they used to bully me because they thinking i was with these niggas like god damn like you know what i'm saying so like they used to terrorize me. I remember one kid, I know you think I'm blabbing, but I'm just trying to tell you what led me up to even being in the streets and how I even developed to be aggressive or had the sense of defending myself, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't defending myself. My mom told me to keep my hands off of people's kids. And if I put my hands on their kids, she ain't gonna buy me no video games or no nice sneakers or no activities. We couldn't go to Darien Lake Sea Breeze and shit like that. And I wasn't gonna let none of them silly looking monkey minded MFers get in the way of my my dopamine as a child. I, I vowed that. So I realized what type of situation I was in. Because I ain't tell on the kids that was bullying me at all. Like, but the counselor seen these motherfuckers is terrorizing me. Like the counselor seen that shit. Like shit was crazy. They wouldn't do that shit if niggas from the Ville was around. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Dre used to come around, we going to the movies and shit. They bullied me in the back of the, of the bus. And Dre come to the bus like, yo, what the fuck is you niggas doing? Niggas is tripping. Like, they stop and shit. Like, he tell me, like, yo, bro, you ain't supposed to be letting them do that to you, bro. You way bigger than them, you are. I'm not telling him, like, yo, I can't do that because I ain't going to get no video games and all. These niggas don't give a fuck about that shit. These young kids ain't care about video games. These kids was distraught. These kids was emotionally disturbed. I don't know what was going on with these kids. This is when I started blaming everybody for my problems, you are. Everybody, bro. Like, damn, y'all supposed to be, like, I'm mad at my mom. I ain't telling her this, but this is me being a little boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm blaming my mom for bringing me there, blaming the counselors for letting this shit happen. I'm blaming everybody, you know, until this shit happened all the way up until I was like, I think like 12 or 13, probably like, yeah, I think it was 12. All right, so Baden Street started in July, you heard? Every July after after the 4th. I used to be at my grandma's house for the summer before Baden Street started. My grandma street was lit. If you ever lived in there on my times, you know what I'm talking about, this shit was lit. Off of 4th and Peck, you heard? So um, we outside chilling. It's like probably like 10 of us. It's my cousins and all the people that live on the street. And there's one kid named Tubbs, you heard? Tubby, he bigger than me and older than me. I don't know if he was older than me, but I knew he was bigger than me. He was taller me and he's fat. He, he had me by like 100 pounds, you are. And I'm like 12, so my mind is developed. I'm already mentally aggressive, so he kept saying SMD, you know what I'm saying? But he's saying the C word instead of the D word, if you know what I'm saying. But I didn't know what that mean. Like, I didn't know what SMD was. Like, I asked my older cousin, like, yo, what, what's SMD mean? He like, yo, he telling you the, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, this nigga trying to bully me on my grandma street? At my grandma house? Like, that was the last straw for me. I ain't gonna hold this is not sidebar. This is not how I got into the streets. I'm just telling you how I grew the per like the type of person I am. You are like I just remember I told him like yo bro stop saying that to me. As I'm saying that he pushed me off my grandma's banister. You know what I'm saying? And I landed on my feet. But like that's when I'm like oh yeah I'm about to whoop this nigga ass. You heard? I was just watching Rinky White on Showtime. He was getting ready for a fight that day and he was showing how to punch. Like how he punch? He uses his finger and press it in and and he punch like quick as hell. You are? That's what I did to tell. He, he's coming down my grandmother's porch like, yo, what, you mad? You mad? What, you want to fight? That's what he's saying, right? I'm like, you don't even know. Like, this is the reason why I did it because my grandma's house is a safe haven. I Like, I don't got no trauma coming over here. So I was on 10 when he came down my grandma's porch. The moment he came down my grandma's porch, I rocked him. Oh! 
Boom! He falls. Big dog. Big dog falls. You are. He gets up. Like I, I blacked out though. I didn't even know that we was fighting until the end. Like he 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 gets up. Like oh niggas. He like yo niggas gonna knock me out. All right. Like you feel me pulling his pants up. While he's pulling his pants up, I swing again. Boom! He falls again. Now his ass is showing. His his pants down. His ass showing. This is crazy. The block going crazy. You are the block going crazy, bro. He keep getting up though. Like he keep grabbing me. I'm start rocking him. I got I got his head. I'm rocking him. Boom! Boom! He bleeding and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, my brother ran and got my auntie and told on me. Instead of these silly looking monkey minded niggas jumping in, my family, they ran and told on me. You know what I'm saying? And I got in trouble. So now that was the day that I became defiant. So now I'm thinking, like, oh, I beat up somebody that's bigger than me and I'm bigger than half of these mother. Oh, yeah, when I go back to Dayton Street Day Camp, it's going down. How you brag about killing the man, but you went to jail and got your face shot in the can? Damn. Damn. Tough times don't lie.